So we're back at the shop and we are now gonna be building a Georgian mantle, right? So what is a Georgian mantle? How do you build a mantle, right? What is it? Well, we talked about how the inspiration in this period was classicism, right? It was what Palladio was doing, is what he had studied with the Greeks and the Romans. This tradition of building has been passed down. Now to our friend John Drayton at Drayton Hall, what's he looking at? Their system, okay, of building is based off this classical system. Now this is the Tuscan order, which is one of the lower, more masculine orders. So there's not as much ornamentation as we're gonna put on ours but it gives you a good break out of the parts and the pieces. Remember, this is a system built on scale and proportion, from the columns to the moldings inside. The basic parts of the classical system are this entablature, which is the beam that runs across, and our column. The horizontal elements are what we're building in a mantle. Why is that? If we have a firebox, right, and it's a big dark hole, okay, what we're doing is we are spanning that opening, okay? And this little mantle shelf that we're putting over top of there is giving this appearance of support, okay? So what this beam does, what that entablature does is convey strength, convey support. Anytime we put a header over a door, over a mantle, we're supporting that opening, okay? In this case, we're gonna support it beautifully. So in this supporting element, okay, the, the one that runs across an opening, here's three parts. There's the architrave, the frieze, and the cornice. This part here is the cornice, it's the pretty part. Then we've got a frieze, which is typically a flat part, and then we've got the architrave. The architrave stands for king beam or chief beam that runs across there. It is the supporting member that spans that opening, okay? So here's our finished piece. Here's what it's made up of. These are the parts and pieces that build this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend that I'm gonna take a section right through here. I'm gonna cut this in half. I'm gonna show you how these parts and pieces go together so that you go, oh, it's really not that complicated, okay? Because mantles are actually very simple. And if you know how to put them together properly, you'll build beautiful mantles. Now, this is our frieze, okay? This is that flat area in between. This frieze actually has a pulvination. It's kind of bulbous, it grows out. It's called a pulvinated frieze, okay? So there's flat friezes and there's pulvinated friezes. This is pulvinated. That's why it has this pretty shape here. Then when you cut this shape on the end, right, it gives it a very curvaceous shape. It's very expressive, right? So that's why I love pulvinated friezes. It is at the bottom, okay? What's we're, what we're gonna do is essentially, our, let's pretend our firebox is down here. Our marble that surrounds the fireplace is right here. This is our, what's called the tania. It runs across and runs around your opening, okay? Then we've got our frieze. And then finally, we've got our cornice, which is a kind of a scrambled collection of, of different parts and pieces that when put together, create a, a beautiful hole, okay? So move those two parts off. First part is the bed mold, okay? Now, the bed mold is this lower section down here. Ours actually has a dental in this thing. That's what this piece is. But the bed mold is typically the supporting mold. Supporting moldings hold up. If I'm gonna hold something up, I'm gonna do this, right? This shape right here is supporting. If I'm gonna finish something, I'm gonna go, ta-da, right? I'm gonna finish. It's a terminating molding up top like this. This is a terminating molding because it finishes out, okay? It's not supportive. So here's our bed mold, right? It's made up of three moldings. We've got a cavetto, which is this shape here, a dental, and then our supporting cyma recta, right? Right there. It goes up underneath this shelf. It's supported by a frieze, and then our architrave runs around the opening. So there is a human scale to this classical system. The Tuscan order has a relationship of a one to seven. What does that mean? Well, the diameter is one, okay? And it's seven units tall in the shaft of the column. So there is a proportion relationship and all of these other parts and pieces relate to that one diameter. The base is, you know, one half of B. It's, it's, it's half as wide as this whole diameter, right? Where does that come from? Well, the male body, okay, in the, this idealized world is, has a one to seven relationship, okay? My foot is 11 inches long. I'm 76 inches tall, right? I'm one inch from being perfect. And all these parts and pieces come together and speak to one another and look proportionally beautiful. Now, here is our finished mantle shelf, right? There's our, there's our pretty element. Now, when you see it at the job, 
it just looks like one big piece, right? And all these parts and pieces speak to one another and create something beautiful and long lasting.